This is a CNN special assignment report. Boxing has the sweet science gone sour. Back in 1983, CNN made a documentary about the future of boxing. Some medical professionals wanted the sport banned. Two fighters, Dooku Kim and Kiko Bahines, died after their bouts, both from brain trauma. New medical research that shows chronic brain damage occurs in fighters with prolonged careers sustain repeated blows to the head. Three decades later, we know what causes concussions. We know the effect of repetitive concussions. But we're still figuring out how to exactly tell when a person has a concussion. In order to protect athletes, tech is studying one of our smallest features. So normally when your eyes are working normally and you're following something across your field of vision, your eyes will smoothly track that. When somebody has a concussion, suddenly the ability to track that becomes very erratic and your eyes are having trouble focusing. So they move in very like varied patterns and varied speed. As a ringside physician, we don't have the luxury of doing a long extended testing on the sideline, but we need to be able to look at the athlete while they're in the cage or in the ring and make a determination. So we can pick up a concussion using the eye guide focus. Three, two, one. So you see that white dot up here? Follow that with your eyes as close as you can. Your ability to follow an object with your eyes is called tracking. A concussion breaks down how your brain and eyes normally talk to one another. So smoothly tracking after a bad hit is difficult. That's what the eye guide focus records. Your results are taken before and after an event. So you can see in the blue was the baseline he did before the bout. The green was about five minutes after he had a, what we call a flash knockout, a very quick knockout. And this is a much heavier fighter who won, but if you notice, again, the blue is the baseline where you see a very smooth figure of eight, and the red is after the bout. It's a supplement to the physician evaluation and the normal criteria that we follow, changes in speech, memory, concentration, reaction time, and eye movements. Right now, there's no single diagnostic tool to determine if someone has a concussion. So doctors use a combination of tests, like asking you to repeat numbers or a phrase and checking your hearing and balance to figure out what's happening inside your head. After concussions and other mild uh, traumatic brain injuries, often the MRI and the CAT scans do not show uh, any pathology. And so we really are dependent on our clinical exam to understand where the problem is. And there are a lot of different ways to look at the uh, neurological function of the patient, but eye movements uh, are something that we can look at and quantify. It's also tough to fake. Tracking's been part of a doctor's toolkit for years, but tech wants to make the system more precise, and the company behind the eye guide focus isn't the only one turning to our eyes for answers. Take the king Debrick test. It begins with a series of numbers. You're asked to go from, from one, one number to the next in a fairly irregular way. The second test, the numbers are scattered around in a more unpredictable fashion, which makes it harder for the patient to perform these saccades or quick movements from one number to the next. In a normal subject who has not had a concussion, it's not a very difficult test. But all of us will actually improve our scores and our speed as we do the test more often. However, the patients that sustained a concussion during the season uh, would actually slow down. Their performance would slow down after the concussion. It is fascinating that just by looking at something as small as eye movements, that you might not even be able to detect sometimes with the human eyes. But from there, you can detect changes that are occurring within a large system in the brain. We know a lot more about concussions than we did in the 80s. There are more rules, more tech, and more precautions. But we're still not perfect. It's actually terrifying when you think about uh, looking back at old footage of fighters. Uh, we're told, oh, go back in, no pain, no gain. Even in Hollywood, the, the Rocky movies, you know, despite the amount of beating that he got, he was always able to be okay. And that's just not reality.